Divine True Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Cornelius speaks to Vanessa Olbrug, USA police officer, through an intermediary, Anto Kloboka. This discussion was held on the 30th of March 2014 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello to everyone who's here. Why am I doing here? <laughs> I was hoping you'd know the answer for that. Um, I'm not quite sure. Mm. There's usually a feeling inside yourself that would bring you here. Do you know what that feeling is? Difficult to say. Is there a new feeling you've been having recently? Mm, yes, how do you know about that? Because <laughs> usually it's the one that activates you to be here. Radio. Any chance you're sharing what that might be? I feel apprehensive for some reason. Mm -hmm. Suspicious, uh -huh. in a way. Yeah. I'm Cornelius, by the way, too. What's your name? My name's Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Hello. I think that's a bit better. At least I know who you are. <laughs> Every time I've talked to people, I always want to know mm. a bit about them. Yeah. Mm. Well, there is something I do want to know. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to formulate the question. Don't quite know how to express it. Mm -hmm. So bear with me. It relates to justice. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always believed in upholding the law and justice. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see where it leads you, to be honest. There's no end to it. Mm. How do you mean there's no end to it? It's a reciprocating, recurring occurrence. Just keeps... Everyone wants a form of justice and then the other person wants the next form of justice. And Isn't just... that really vengeance? How do you mean? Well, they want a, a vengeance of a certain thing that's happened rather than justice. I just want to disguise it as something else. Mm. Never contemplated it that way, but yes, I can see that. Mm. It's just but it's not always the same for everyone, is it? Mm. Most people, when they have anger involved, it will be. If they have love involved, it'll be justice and it'll be served by God's laws. Not by the way man manipulates laws to make it look like it's, like, looks like it's serving justice. But I upheld the law in the name of justice, mm. you know. We're here to do that. Mm. What was your scenario you're talking about? Well, in my everyday work. Mm. What was it to do with law, was it or something? No, I was a police officer. Yeah. Mm. So we upheld the, upheld the law in mm -hmm. the name of ensuring that every, everything is done justly. Mm. So everyone is treated the way they should be. Mm. You know, the offender is justly punished, incarcerated. There's an outcome for everyone. Mm. Where's God getting 
involved in that? Well, <laughs> the reason why we need to make all these laws is because we don't honour the one law that God has created, and that's love. Yeah, but people act unlovingly, don't they? Exactly. And that's what yeah. that's why man comes in and ensures that they're punished for that. But God also has laws in place for that as well. It may not seem direct, like he feels like you can't see them acting straight away, but they are there and they are, are applied to a full extent as well. Once they, people that don't recognise, once they do pass from the spirit, from the material world into the spirit world, they start coming under the effect of that law quite directly. And it's obvious, it's not so obvious when you're on earth, but it's obvious when they become there. You ever see on earth, how would you govern society by living a life of love. That's a self-honouring system, isn't it? Well, it's a, yeah, it's a way of conscience, I suppose, yeah. So how it's would you enforce justice? It's a way of choice, how you use your free will, and how, you, how you'd like to be treated yourself compared to how you treat others. It has to be, um, you have to be open to feeling. If you don't know what it's like, if, to, um, if you're treating someone in a way that's not very loving towards them, and expect to be treated lovingly towards yourself when you're not treating others the same way, that's pretty hypocritical, isn't it? So you must have a conscience feeling about the way you treat people. Yeah, but in those moments, you know, you've, have you met these people, you know, when they're, they're enraged mm. and then they, the only feeling they feel is enraged. Mm. Did they? They don't listen to any reason. You know, no. it takes a lot of effort for us to contain that person. Yeah, it needs to be. You need to restrict them. You've got to restrict them. Yeah. So well, well, how's the love going to interfere? That is, that is the most loving thing, isn't it? To restrict them from harming themselves or anybody else until their rage exacerbates. Yeah, I yeah. hate when they harm others. Yeah. You know, I want to stop them from doing that. Hmm. But how would love be able to do that? How do you mean? How would love stop that person from going and harming another? Because all they're feeling at that point is rage. Mm. It takes someone else in a loving condition to just hold them, hold them from exacting that rage out in someone. Like you said with the police, when you used to see a person like that, you'd have to restrain them and let the rage come, come out of them, let them still be rageful, but not harming anybody in the process. Yeah, that's if we're there. Yeah. You know? But what happens when we're not there? And often someone gets hurt, don't they? Yeah, we're always up pretty yeah. much after the fact. Yeah. You know, we all are. And there's laws in place that you just don't know about, or don't seem to know about, that are in place, that are working constantly, 24-7, that God has put in place. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work, does it? Well, it does, actually. Have you seen those people since then? Well, Have you seen where they go to when they do pass? No, yeah. I've, I've just been helping all the other police officers. Mm. Have you seen the quality of life of those sort of people, even when they're on Earth, what their life turns into? And they choose to have rage as their number one avenue of choice? Yeah, well, they always harm people. Mm. You know? Do they seem happy? No, they're definitely not happy. Yeah. Does... But now I can see them before they do these things. Mm. You know, I can even see the potential of them doing yeah. it. And I try and stop them. Mm. We all try and stop them. Yeah. But just. It's very hard to do it. People don't listen to us. Mm. Does anybody want to know how they got to that stage? Or are they just trying to fix the effect all the time? What do you mean, fix the effect? Or well, what you see is an effect of something else, isn't it? Their rage. Why are they rageful? Oh, I don't care why they're rageful. I just want to stop them from harming the next person. And that's the problem. It's just fixing up effects and it's going to be exhausting. Yeah, but this is what I do. Mm. And are you exhausted? <laughs> Oh, I'm bloody damn tired of it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you would be. So it's far more economical to go look at what's causing the problem, isn't it? Rather than trying to fix up the effects all the time. Yeah, but I'm not trained in that. Mm. You know, I'm trained to do, stop a person from doing stuff. And here's my chance, mm. but my hands are tied. You know, like here's my opportunity. I can actually see them before they go and harm someone. Mm. And I can't do shit about it. Mm. So it's futile. It's, it's worse than futile. <laughs> yeah. Frustrates the hell out of me. Yeah, you can have an impression on them sometimes, but the impression has to come from love. Yeah, I try to, you know, like mm. I, I yell at them. But that's not love. When someone yells at you, does it feel like someone's loving you? I try to even get the person out of the way. Mm. You know, there's... No, it's not. Mm. I mean, but I know you're what else in... can I do? Yeah, I know you have good intentions to want to help others. That's what you're saying, but... Like, I helped one person and that person died because of that. Mm. You know, they stepped in 
they actually impulsively stepped in. Yeah, and got harmed in the process. And they got harmed in the process. Yeah. And the other person still got harmed. Mm. Like, where's God in that? Yeah. And God's there all the time. It's people's choices that are the problem. Yeah, I God know. People the are the problem. Mm. You know, you can't. So why do I choose to help these people now when I can't do anything about it? That's what I'm asking myself. Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, so <laughs> I haven't got an answer to it. <laughs> it's like a riddle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've all been talking about it. But mm. You just like to help people but don't know how, what's the most effective way? Because it doesn't seem to work. Yeah. You know, there's, I mean, we see it, we see it. There's more and more police, there's more and more people doesn't work. You it's know, just as much violence. There's more violence. Mm. Just more people, more violence. Mm. I don't understand what the system, why. So it doesn't work. Nothing works. Yeah. You know, it's hard for me to admit that, but it's true. Mm. I, we see it. But love is always the answer. Love will always work. So the system mustn't have a, an amount of love in it that must be missing. Yeah, obviously, I mean, mm. but. <laughs> You know, you talk about love, mm -hmm. but I can't see how love can change everything if people don't want to be loving. Well, it can't if those people. But then the people that want to be loving won't generally want to be around those people. But how does a person avoid, you know, someone who wants to go harm someone? Mm. You know, usually they not. go get a shotgun and they go and kill a whole bunch of people. But usually when they want to be loving, they don't want to be around those people. It's not drawn into those scenarios as well. There's a law of attraction going on. How does that work? Well, usually they don't. They make a choice. I don't want to be around those sort of people. I don't want to go and sit down at a pub when I know everybody's going to be drunk and violent. So I don't want to be around those people. So I won't go to a pub. So I make a choice within myself. I don't want to be around those sort of people where I know that possibly that thing's going to happen. So the chances of me being caught up in that have reduced dramatically. Yeah, but that doesn't happen. Like, isn't that just a a concept that you're talking about? No, it's the truth. Like if I make a choice to myself, I don't want to drink anymore because no drink, one, it affects me, but also allows spirits to come into me. And a lot of times when people drink, they get affected by spirits so much because they've got a violent feeling inside themselves already. The spirits want to exact that through that person and create fights going on. Yeah, I've seen them. I've yeah. seen a lot of those exactly. people. Yeah. And so I make a choice that I don't want to be, I don't want to have, I don't want to use alcohol to cover up some of my feelings. I don't want to use alcohol to make myself happy. I don't want to use alcohol to make myself avoid my sadness. I'd rather just feel those feelings that I have inside myself rather than using a substance to do that. So I won't get drawn to places that have that substance available to me. Does that make sense now? But, but that person, like, they want that. Yeah, that's so their choice. I can't go and, and you can't push love into them. No, you can't. You gotta allow them to make their choice and suffer the consequences of their choice. But then they harm another. Yes, they do and they, there are consequences for that choice. I know there's, I don't know if there's consequences or not. There are, I see it, the mm. person gets harmed. But how do I stop them? How do, how do we help them? The only way you can help a person, like I said, is through love. Like you said before. I can go stand there and just project love. You can, yes. And it can force a person to leave. Not force them, but it can make them feel like, what am I doing here? This, this place has not got any love in it. Why am I here for? And I just want to be out of there. Well, I don't, I don't want to be there myself at times. Mm. That you get drawn to there? Yeah, I just, I just get drawn to a lot of places. Mm. You know, we're like a... I want to help people and I don't want people to be harmed. The mm. next thing you know, I'm there. Do you want to know people? What do you mean by that? Well, like, I know people. Yeah, like I was saying before to you, you sort of walk straight over what I was saying before, how you're just dealing with effects at the moment, and it's going to be quite frustrating, as you know. But do you want to know why the person that seems to be the instigator of anger and violence, how they got to that stage? Because they're born as a baby, and they weren't violent. But no baby's born with violence in them. So how did they get from that to this? But my question is, like, if I get to know them and mm -hmm. why that they have those impulsions, mm. how's that going to help that person? Like, what can I do with that? When they come to a realisation of the things that happen inside themselves, you probably can't help much of the people on earth because their will is forcing themselves in a different direction. Okay, so there's the real answer. Yeah. 
but you can't do anything with that. And you'll have to let that go, that they've got free will to choose what they want to do with their life and the direction it's going to take. So basically you're saying I'm helpless, I can't really do anything. In that scenario, yeah. And that's why I'm angry, I'm frustrated about that. Mm. So what? Mm. You just make me feel more frustrated. <laughs> Maybe it's a feeling you need to actually feel. But I feel that. I've been feeling that from the day I was inducted. Mm. Do you remember when you joined the force? What drew you to join it? So I actually wanted to join the police force too in two different states. Yeah, I, I was sick and tired of my old man bashing the hell out of my mum. Mm. You know, I wanted to stop it. Yeah, and didn't know how? Didn't know how. And felt helpless as a kid. If I work with the law, then I'll be able to do that. Mm. Yeah, I was very helpless. But you couldn't take back all the violence that happened though, could you, even though you become a policeman? No, I probably instilled more violence myself. Mm. Not proud of that. But at least I had the law behind me to say I could do it. Mm. But there's a very powerless feeling that started all that. Yeah, of course. I couldn't touch him, he was huge. Yeah, and this is the frustration. You should see he try and touch me now. Mm. This is the frustration feeling though, when you're just so small and so little and something so big doesn't respect your free will or the free will of others. No, I can't change him. How, mm. you know, like, I was small. Mm. I was scared of him, I was terrified. Yeah. You know, like, how's my love gonna change him? Mm. You know, I wanted him to be my dad, but not to harm. Not to harm us. Yeah. We didn't deserve it. Mm. There's a lot of sadness behind your anger with that though too. Fuck yeah. About what happened in your life. I'd punish him, I'd punish him as long as I could. Mm. That's only going to make things worse for yourself. It's just you're no different than everybody else that's hurting everybody else really, are you, in that, in that state? So where does it ever end? Like you said, it's just reciprocal, it just keeps going around. But no, I'm starting to see that. Mm. So anger just instills more anger. It doesn't change anything, whereas love stops it, stops the cycle. But you know, I talked about those other people being angry when, when I'm angry myself. Mm. How do I stop that? Because yeah. it takes a lot to get... I can't say I've stopped it, I've just gone through it. I think it's still within you, you just don't know how to deal with it, like what to do with the anger. You, mm. And that's quite crazy. You know effort. what it feels like, it feels... It's there, I know it's there, it's not... Like everything, everything I think of, it just frustrates me, it just... It's a feeling you're going to need to find some space to sit with though too. And let yourself experience the feeling. And not towards anybody. But you just told me how it... Like I can see where it's coming from, mm. in a way. And you need to revisit those feelings. But then all I want to do is go and punish this. Punish other guys, punish... Mm but feel how it's come born from the feeling that you couldn't do anything. And that's the feeling you'll need to sort of discover again, rediscover when you're a child, that you couldn't stop anything. You're too little to, you couldn't stop it. It was impossible. And how helpless you felt with that feeling when all you wanted was good to happen. But that hurts. Mm. really hurts, you don't understand. Yeah. I don't want people to be able to harm me like that anymore. No, it's not nice. That's why I became it? a police officer. Mm. In that place, I was always harmed. Mm. So how, where was love for me then, you know? Like, who protected me then? It seemed kind of absent, didn't it? There was no one there. Yeah. My mum was helpless. Mm. He'd harm her, then he'd harm us. Your mum actually could have left him. What would she do? We wanted her to leave too, but... Mm. Then you would have been more protected. And she loved you enough to want to actually leave him, the man that's causing violence upon you, you guys and on her. In a way, I wanted to protect her, but I am angry at her too. She had a responsibility to protect you guys, though. You're only little. But how's she going to do that? by leaving the person that's harming you guys. She chose not to. I 
You know, I don't want to be angry at mum. But that doesn't feel right. Just let yourself feel whatever comes up for yourself at the moment. Just try that and see what happens. Don't worry if it's right or wrong, just... I mean, these feelings I haven't had... Well, you... I don't like these feelings. Yeah. They're quite difficult, aren't they? Very. Yeah. You know... It'll help you a lot to feel them, it'll help you to grow and hope you to stop feeling that frustrating feeling that you've got to help the world. Every time I start feeling these feelings, I just want to scream and... Yeah, you need to do that. Because it's been stuck inside you for such a long time. And what happens if I do do this? Will then others be able to harm me? I won't be able to protect myself. No, you're actually the most protected. When you're feeling your own feelings, the truth of what your own feelings are, you're the most protected. I know it seems odd to you, but that's how the laws work. How does that work? Because you're actually allowing yourself to be yourself and the feeling to come out of you, you're actually working in, in harmony with God's laws at that stage. But I'll feel weak, you know, like, I'll that's feel okay. vulnerable. That, that's okay. But there's others around you who are there to protect you, called spirit guides. When you're on Earth, they're around at the same time. They were there. They weren't there. They were there. No, they weren't. Yeah, they were. And you may remember them at some stages, but they were there all the time, wanting to help. But they were just like yourself, not able to do much. Why couldn't they do much? They can't oppose another person's free will. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. But you're making a free will choice now to feel your feelings about your own sadness. I mean, it's always been there, it's just... Mm. When you're not choosing to feel it... Don't want to look at it. Yeah, when you're not choosing to feel it, you're going to make different choices, and your choices are going to be made from anger, generally, and fear. A lot of the choices you've made since that time... I'm not fearful. I'm just angry. Yeah, but you're actually quite afraid of feeling those feelings. How... I can see those feelings, I can feel those feelings. Mm. I don't want to feel them. That's the problem. If you don't want to feel them, you're going to be under more chance of being harmed. Because you're going to turn, turn to anger instead, aren't you? Yeah, and, and that's we, what when keeps you, me protected. And no, when you're choosing anger, you're going to invite more anger around you. But who's angry at me? No one. No. What? But, you, but you'll start attracting anger. When you're starting to put anger at everybody else, you're going to attract anger back at you. You're going to be in situations where you'll be attracted to angry situations, just like you're angry, so you join the police force. What do you think your life entailed? Lots of anger and violence. But if you had to made a, a different choice, if you could have made known some different things back then, you could just let yourself feel how hopeless you felt and how unsafe you felt and how insecure you felt. If you let yourself feel those and how scared you were all the time, if you let yourself feel those feelings. But if I don't feel anger, that means I'll... Anger is not a strong feeling, it's a weary, weak feeling. Yeah, but that's what keeps me... keeps me stable. It actually just keeps you away from your sad feelings. And they're the ones... That too. Yeah, but they're the ones that'll, that'll actually help you the most. But you don't believe that at the moment. No, I will Have you tried it yet to see if it's true or not? You've tried these angry feelings for a long, long time now and has it brought you what you wanted? Well, no, I'll, I can feel it's all a waste of time. Mm. So maybe it's time to try a different tact. And what can you lose? Yeah. I don't know, I haven't resolved to do that. Mm. I can see that. We can all see that. But these feelings, you know, they're... they're if I'm truthful to you, 
I can sense they're there, you know, because the instant you layer yourself a bit, it just, if it's raw, it comes up straight away. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I know, but... I know it hurts. I'm an adult, though. I shouldn't be need to feel these things. It doesn't matter whether you're an adult or a child, it's still a feeling that'll come up. You're still human. You're still a soul. I'm a soul. Mm. What does that mean? Well, the soul has qualities, and one of the qualities is a feeling of emotion. And you can't stop it. It's one of the natural things that you are. So you're saying my soul is now making me feel bringing all these things up. It's always been there. The child has a soul, the adult has the soul, the human but, body has a soul, the spirit body has the soul for a certain times. But why is the soul doing it now? Because it's just coming up at the point where you're getting frustrated and sick of doing the same thing over and over again. It's giving you no, no relief. So your soul starts searching for different other avenues that will give you relief. If you want relief, your soul will find a way to find that. This is what's brought you here today. I can help you with some of those things, if possible. That's up to you, though, in the end, what you want, if you're willing to. So you're saying, I desire to come here. Mm. I want to come talk to you. Yeah, that's what brought you here. That's one of the qualities of her soul, it's called desire. You have a feeling of desire to want to change, to want something better. But how do you know so much of this stuff? I've been in a situation similar to yourself in a way. But you've been angry like I have. Very, very angry. Yep, I had a life very in similar ways to yours. I was taken from my family when I was five years old and put into a training camp where we used to get beaten up and abuse sexually, physically, emotionally. So how did you overcome that? Didn't you want to harm everyone who did Yeah, that? I did harm everybody. I had a very, very violent life. It was the sort of person you would try and restrain and hold back. And I could never be restrained and hold back because it was part of the law. I was allowed to do it. The law didn't work very well in that case, did it? And I had a whole life like that and until I went, I died and went to the spirit world too. I wanted to stay away from everybody. I hated everybody. Yeah, I, I can. Mm. I understand that. Mm. But eventually, someone came to me with some some truths about love. You said someone came to you. Yeah. And there's many people that can come to you guys too if you'd want them to as well. It will help you. It's just. But come... it's worked for you. Yeah. But it was eventually. I was angry at them for a long time. Any time I was angry, the people would leave. I don't want to be around someone that's angry, but I chose to be angry all the time. And when I chose to eventually want to listen to what they're saying and want some help from them, I was exhausted as well. But I was able to hear them for a while. I mean, There's only small periods of time over a long time. But eventually I was able to listen to them more because they're, they're, they're allowed, not allowed, but the feeling inside of me weren't pushing them away all the time. I was more open to hearing them. So what happens when, so what it really happened to you when you felt your anger? Mm. Like those other feelings, were you able to cope with them? Yeah, of course. I didn't think I could at first either. There was so much grief, so much sadness. So what'd you do? I just had to let myself experience it in the end. I couldn't try any other avenue. I was exhausted with anger. You... I had anger all my life. I just had so much of it. I just didn't want any more of it. Yet so... It was still stuck in me. I needed it out of me, and it was the only way that I was showing how to get it out was to feel those feelings of the sadness. The anger was just covering those up. It was just a waste of time. And it well, worked for you? Yeah, of course. Mm. There's lots of loving, very gentle people that are around you guys that would like to help you guys if you want the help as well. But remember what I said about the anger? The anger is going to push them away. Yeah, I am drawn to it. I don't know why. Yeah. As you've explained this now, for some reason, I've mm. got different feelings about it. Yeah, they've had similar lives to yourself, by the way, the people that, will, that are wanting to help you. So they'll know exactly what you're talking about, have been through the frustration period, have been through the not wanting to feel the sad parts of their life. They've had to go through all that as well. And now they're able to help people in a genuine way that actually works. And you're going to be one of their first. Well, not one of their first. They've helped lots of people, but... They'd like to help you. Are you sure it's going to be okay? Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> they say you will too.
Oh, this pain is just unbearable. I don't know, I need to have some time with him. Mm. Is there people that have come to you yet? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be good if you guys spend some time with them. I'll help you a lot through this. I'm just scared. You'll be okay, Vanessa. I don't know. They all love you very much. I don't... Look, I'm a strong girl, I can do this. Well, thank you for talking with me. You're welcome, Vanessa. Look, take care, hey. Yeah. I'm going with these people. Yeah, that'd be good. We all thank you from Thanks all of us. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.